Hey friends, Happy New Year. Hope you had a good one. I know 2020 wasn't great, but let's make 2021 a much better one. I'm really excited and I'm going to start off the video by showing you something pretty cool, right? So take a look at this. It's a live, or it's meant to be uh, replicate a live snake and it's running in my terminal. So it looks pretty cool, right? Uh, an anaconda anyway. What I'll do is I'll put the link for that project in uh, the video description below. With that said, if you haven't already, please do smash that like button because today we're going to be learning something pretty cool. We're going to go through a complete overview of error handling in Python. Okay, I know it doesn't sound that good, but trust me, you're going to learn a lot. And this is probably one of the most important topics for any programmer. By the way, I know this is going to sound a bit weird, but don't code along with me today. Just just watch the video until the end because I really want to focus on helping you understand error handling in Python. Once you've got a good understanding, feel free to watch a video a second or third time so then you can code along and try it for yourself. Right, with all of that said, strap your seatbelts and let's get started. Right, so I'm going to open up item and then what I'll do is I'll make it bigger so you can see. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll go into the temp directory. And that's why I'm going to be writing the program today. And then I'll also open temp or I'll open another tab on the right hand side. And this is where we're going to run the program. So I'm going to use Vim today. So I'll type Vim program.py. And then what I'll do is uh, this is where we'll write the program on the right hand side. Um, I'll give it a run. So let's start off with a very basic dictionary. Right, so we know that in Python, to create a dictionary, we use the curly braces like many other languages. So we're going to start off by creating a dictionary called info. And this is going to store some personal information. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have, what, the first name. And then I'll put my name. And then I'll copy this and we'll have surname. And then Ahad. And we'll leave it there. We'll keep it, keep it bare bones. Um, so we've got two keys in the dictionary and two corresponding values. And then what I'll do just for the sake of running this program or yeah, let's is I'll just print out info. And then on the right hand side, well, let me write this and then let me go to the right hand side and then we'll type Python program.py. And then here you can see the dictionary printed out. Right, so let's make this a bit more interesting. What I want to do this time is I want to print out the first name. And essentially to do that in Python, what we do is here we reference first name um, and you do that using square brackets. So essentially Python is going to look at this uh, line. It's going to go to info and then it's going to look for the key. Uh, in this case, it's going to look for first name. It finds it. And then of course, it's going to print out the value of first name, which is my name. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll write that and then we'll go to uh, um, the other side and we'll run the program. And here you can see my first name is printed out. Now I'm going to throw you a brain teaser here. What happens if I try to print out the value for a key in the dictionary that doesn't exist? So for example, let's say I have country, right? Now this value or that key in the dictionary, it doesn't exist, right? We just have first name and surname. We don't have country. What do you think is going to happen here? Now we're going to give this a run and let's see what happens. Now here we can see an exception is raised and the error that we get is a key error. And essentially what Python is doing, so the first thing that Python has done is, is crashed, right? That's the first thing that you need to understand. Exceptions crash your program. So when you have errors like this, what will do, what will happen anyway, is when Python runs it, if it experiences that error, it will completely stop the program at the point where it failed. In the file program.py, which is our program, on line six, um, there's this line of code here and it had or it faced a key error when it tried to uh, use this piece of code and this piece of code is um, country and that piece of code exists on line six right and essentially it's telling us you try to access um, a key in the dictionary uh, that doesn't exist and we know that's true because if we go to the right hand side we can see that we only have a first name and surname we don't have country now, as programmers, we want to write good code. We want to build good software, um, software that doesn't crash, that's bug free as best as it can be. Uh, because what happens is if we build software that has errors like this, then the people that are using the software are going to get frustrated and they'll probably give up using whatever you know app or website you build because uh, they won't be able to access it or they'll face um, issues. Now, to effectively handle this, what we want to do is we want to make use of the try catch notion in programming. I'm going to show you a very simple example of try catch, and what we'll do is we'll jazz it up a bit and then I'll show you a bit more of the complexity. So a very simple try catch works in this way. You type try 
followed by colon. And as you notice, when I hit enter here, Python's now expecting uh, a number of lines of code, we can write one or however many, uh, of things that we want to try. In this case, I just have one line of code that I want to run, which is printing out info country. So what I'll do is I'll bring that up and then after that, once you've got that in place, the next thing to do is uh, handle the situation where an error occurs. Now, the way you do that in Python is you type accept, exception, and another colon. Now, what this is telling Python is you're going to try and run this line of code, which is printing out info country, and accept a scenario where you get an exception. In other words, when an error occurs, here you want to do something else. And in this case, we're just going to print out an error occurred right i'm going to write that go back to the beginning so essentially this is an example of a very simple try catch statement in python now you're probably saying wait it says try accept and the reason why i sort of say try catch all the time is because pretty much in every other program language um, especially in javascript um, it's actually try catch so you'd actually write try catch here um, However, in Python, it's called accept. I don't know why they chose to do that. Maybe it's because they want it to be different. But then again, Python came before JavaScript. So anyways, now let's give this program a run. So I'm going to go to the right hand side. I'm going to type Python. Oh, let's clear that type Python program dot py. And here you noticed instead of crashing this time, it went ahead and ran the code that we defined here. So in the case that an exception occurred, um, what we wanted to print out a statement and it did exactly that. Now that's a very simple way of handling an exception that occurs in your Python program and making sure that it doesn't crash. In this case, it didn't crash and that's great. However, here we're not getting much information about what error actually occurred. And in much more uh, sophisticated and larger programs, you might have any number of errors that occur. And so we want to at least print out a bit more information so other programmers as well as your users sort of have a better understanding of what's going on. Now it's quite simple to get a bit more information about this error. All you have to do after exception is type as and then I'm going to type E. Now let's walk through this. This as keyword essentially what it does is it's going to create a variable and we're going to in this case we're calling the variable E and what it will do is it's going to store the error that occurred in this variable e right so it's going to store the error or the exception we use them interchangeably in programming but this error slash exception is going to store it in e and the reason why that's useful is because in the block itself we can actually access e so we can better understand exactly what kind of error occurred now a very simple way to actually see what happened is typing print followed by e and then what I'll do is I'll delete that, we'll save it and we'll give that a run and see what that prints out. Now you're probably thinking, wait, that didn't actually give me much information about what's going on or it didn't tell me what error occurred. Now to get more information about this error, the first number one thing that you need to understand is E is no ordinary variable. It's an exception variable. So what does that mean? An exception variable has some inner properties that sort of tell you what's going on. The most important one is its type. The type of this exception will tell you what kind of error occurred and to access the type of an exception variable, all you have to do is type type, wrap it in brackets and then I'm going to close out the print statement here and now what that will do is this will print out the type of error that occurred, E being the exception variable, again we're wrapping it with the type and now if I save that and I run python program.py here, here you'll notice that it's printing out class key error. Now key error is the actual error that's occurring. Now key error is a type of error that indicates that you're trying to access a key in the dictionary that doesn't exist. Now that we have an idea of the error that's occurring, let's look back at this line of code here and ask ourselves, is this the best way to handle what's going on? Here we have this word exception and essentially this is every kind of possible error that can ever exist in Python this is gonna capture it. Now, although that sounds good on paper, it's not great. And the reason why is because when it comes to error handling, we wanna be very specific about the kind of errors that can occur. And what we wanna do is we wanna be proactive. We wanna think about what possible errors can exist when we run this uh, block of code in try and then handle each error appropriately. And when I say handle, I mean, we want to be able to give a bit more information to whoever is running the program about what error is happening, why it's happening, um, but more 
importantly, suggesting what they can do to fix the error. So with that said, looking back at the key dictionary, we know that if we try to run this code, we received an error and the error was um, a key error. And essentially this is what happens when you try to access a key in a dictionary that doesn't exist. So what you can do in Python is you can actually replace exception here. And I'm gonna do that in this case. And I'm gonna type key error. Now, the reason why this is good is because now we know in this block of code, essentially, we're going to handle the case where they try to access a key that doesn't exist or didn't exist in the dictionary. And this is going to allow us to write better code. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to tell the user, you try to access a key that that doesn't exist. And then uh, go down here and then we'll say, um, or we'll tell them or we'll print out exactly what key that was. So I'm just going to print out E. I'm going to save that. And now if I run Python program.py, here we get a better error message, which is you try to access the key doesn't exist. And here we're printing out the key. And if we really wanted to, we could just sort of say, here's the key. And I'm going to make that an F string um, because in Python, that is a, a really nice way to print out um, strings. So if I go here, Python program.py. Here again, we're being very specific and that's cool. But if we have more sophisticated and longer code in the try block, we might have other examples of errors, right? So we can have except, you know, other error. Um, there's plenty of other errors in Python, but um, in this case, we're just handing in the key error. Also, if you wanted to, you could actually type except exception here. And what this will do is um, it will handle every other error apart from the key error. So, you know, if you really wanted to, if you just wanted to, you know, handle the case where you don't really know what error could occur apart from the key error, um, and you just want to be absolutely sure, you could put exception here. And uh, here you could, um, if you wanted to, uh, in this case, I could put it as exc. And then of course I could print out exe if I wanted to, or you could do some, or write some other uh, code here to handle that exception. Now I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to show you the next thing that you can actually write in try catches. And it's it's something really nice. And it's the reason why I actually did like uh, exception handling or this whole kind of try catch uh, construct in Python. And it's called else. Now if I type else here with a colon, essentially this is, uh, the keyword is else, um, right? And essentially, this is where you write the code that is run if you didn't have the error. So in other words, if you didn't have the key error, so say, for example, this piece of code wasn't triggered. So let's actually make that happen. So here I'm going to type first name. And in this case, as you can tell, because we have first name in the dictionary, it's going to try to run this. That's going to run fine. It's not going to trigger this code because there isn't an error. So it's going to come down here and it's going to enter into the else block. So else, in other words, else um, the exception didn't occur, the key error didn't occur. We want to do something else. And this is where I'm going to write. Um, we can write any you know line of code, but I'm just going to write uh, happy days, right? Because no error occurred and we're looking good. So I'm going to give that a run. And here you notice here, my first name is printed because again, we accessed my first name uh, using the info um, followed or with the first name key. And then afterwards we used the else block and that printed out happy days. And this uh, set of, or this piece of code wasn't triggered. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you when it comes to using this try catch block in Python, and in all honesty, I don't use it as much, but it's worth knowing and it's called finally. It's basically meant to be, okay, after everything, after the try, the accept, the else, do this last thing. And sometimes you might want to use it. Maybe you just want to print out, okay, thanks for using this program, which is what we're going to do. Or maybe you want to write some, you know, other kind of code. This is very much dependent on the kind of program you're writing, but it's just worth knowing that essentially we're going to try to run something, you know, we'll handle the errors. Um, and if there's no errors, we're going to do this. And really right at the end, you know, the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to run uh, this line of code or uh, this code block. As I mentioned, I don't really use it. Uh, for me, try except else is quite nice. And that's usually enough for me to do the job. 
but finally it's available to you so you can definitely use it um, if you want to do something right at the end in some cases you might want to close out a session um, and that's you know when you're writing uh, more complicated python programs where you might actually want to close file handlers and stuff but usually python takes care of all of that for you so you shouldn't really need to but i imagine there's definitely use cases for it um, but i again i don't really use it as much but it's worth knowing about it's quite cool so just for completeness let's give this program a run just to see exactly what it prints out and here you notice it's going to print out my name happy days which is what we define in the else block and then of course the last line of code which is indicated by finally and uh, it's going to print out thanks for using this program and that's it really although there is one thing that i purposely missed out and the reason why is because i actively discourage it but you know what i'll do i'll show you what it is um but again i discourage it unless you know what you're doing um or you have a very specific use case so coming back to this exception block here we're handling the case where we have a key error but you might have a scenario where you want to handle multiple errors in the same way and to do that what you can do is you can type or uh, you can wrap multiple errors as a list and the way you do that is you, you know you enclose it in brackets so here is um, the uh, opening bracket and then what I'll do is I'm going to type key error followed by attribute error that's another kind of error in Python and then you close the bracket now essentially what's going on here is you're telling Python that in the case that you have multiple errors and in this case we have two errors um, handle it by running this code here now the reason why I discourage it is because again it's going back to that whole point about when it comes to handling exceptions we want to be very specific and so if you group exceptions it means your handlers are generic too and that means um, unless again you know what you're doing that means that to the user they're not going to have a clear idea of what's going on and so it kind of defeats the purpose of using except uh, in the first place but again it's you know totally up to you uh, i'll show i've shown you what it is but yeah it's up to you if you want to use it but generally i discourage uh, grouping exceptions right that's it in the video i'm sure you learned a lot so please do smash that like button and if you want to see more python tutorials like this make sure you subscribe thanks a lot for watching happy new year again and i'll see you in the next video peace